So pretty amazing. I'm standing underneath the area where a meteorite would have come out of the sky, hit this area, create a gigantic explosion. And what we're seeing is the heart or the guts of what is left of that meteorite impact. The meteorite impact site is just outside Santa Fe, New Mexico in southwestern United States. Santa Fe is the capital of New Mexico and the impact site is about six miles up the road towards the Santa Fe ski area. Going up Highway 275 is a very unique rock formation. It's known as shatter cones and they're the byproduct of a meteorite impact that happened here in the Santa Fe area approximately 350 million years ago. It's hard often to envision some things that people are talking about. So what I'd like to do is, as best I can, draw what portion of the crater we're actually seeing here just east of Santa Fe where we see these shatter cones. So I'm gonna start this drawing with an image of, let's say, a portion of the earth outside Santa Fe. So we'll say this is that area that's eventually going to get hit by the meteorite. And this is granite. So these little dashed lines are usually the symbol for granite in most geologic maps. So you'll see. I don't know if something existed above the granite at that time, but I'm going to assume I know there was granite because we can see it was shocked. So I'm going to have it in place here. And what I'm going to do is show you through time what happens as this meteorite made impact and maybe where the shatter cones would be. Now we have the meteorite approaching the earth and coming in for an impact and the meteorite makes impact with the earth it creates a crater which are things like what we see at like meteor uh is it the meteor crater park in arizona now what happens here east of santa fe is something slightly different so the crater is made and when the crater is made and the meteorite impacts it sends a series of shock waves into the earth which is where we start developing our shatter cones our cones have developed down here somewhere deeper in the earth some distance from where the meteor impact took place now as far as I've read, nobody understands exactly what that distance is. Um, if anybody knows more about this or this concept, please feel free to comment down below and point me to some resources. I'd love to learn a little bit more about the formation of these and, and, and the type of depth maybe scientists are thinking about where these shatter cones develop. But they develop at some depth, some distance away from the immediate impact site. And so what we have today in Santa Fe is something like this, where we originally had the meteor impact site up here all this has been eroded down and all we now see are these shatter cones and that's what we are visiting today and what we're taking a look at so pretty interesting story so here's some beautiful views of those shatter cones and you can really see how they're splaying out and coming down because the impact and now this is granite so this is the same stuff that makes up things like the sierra nevadas that make up people's countertops but you can really see that conical shape we see craters at various places like a meteor crater in arizona what we see is a surface expression however what's happening underneath in the rocks where that crater hit there's so much force that the force creates shock waves that go down into the rock and it'll actually shatter these rocks and create this conical pattern and there's two ways you can get shatter cones one way is through meteorites the other way is through a nuclear blast now with where we're sitting here I think we can pretty much rule out the idea of a nuclear blast here. However, that leaves a meteorite impact. So the crater would have been way above us somewhere and all that's all been eroded off now and it's gone and all that's left is the remnants of it are these shatter cones. So I imagine something like this would have originally really caught a geologist's eye because you're like, well, why is this splaying? You can see how this splays out in a, con a cone type feature, hence the name shattered cones. And you can see how it's what we call foliated, or it's rough to the to the feel here. But you can see this, and I'm sure geologists saw this originally and thought, what the heck is this? And then started doing research of how do we get these kinds of shapes in nature? Because they're not very common. I can tell you, I've, I've worked a lot of areas in the world and places, and I've never seen a shatter cone until today. So this is a pretty unique and wonderful place to come visit. Is a geoscientist or just somebody who's fascinated by meteorites, or the history of the earth. On the ground is a really nice example of one of these shatter cones coming down and you see my hand for scale. And the gentleman who discovered this site or recognized this site did a lot of work and, and published some papers on it. And I'll link those papers down in the description below and you can look those up yourselves online. It was a great eye by this geologist to recognize 
these abnormal features that don't look like anything else in the area. There was something different he saw, and so he asked the question, going back to basic scientific theory, what is this? What am I seeing and why is it like this? So one of the things we do as geoscientists is we'll take a look at what's come down the hill. We can see what's in place, but sometimes maybe places are precarious or we want to understand what else may be in the area to look out for. And so we can go through and look at what's coming down the side of the hill in what we call scree. And we can look for indicators like we see a lot of the granite that we've seen here when we were looking at when we were looking at the shatter cones. However, we can see other things like this muscovite in here which is very shiny. You can see this is maybe muscovite and biotite that's in here, that's very shiny. And it's it's ridged, so this may be actually part of the shatter cone features as well. But I can also look for things like, oh look, here's quartz, and it looks like it's a quartz vein, possibly. And we see more of that as we walk over here. We can actually see both together, where you have this muscovite and or biotite together along with this nice large quartz rock. And so as geologists and geoscientists, we look for clues like this down the hill to get an idea of what we may see as we're mapping or doing research or exploring up these hills. Now I've walked up the road a ways and I can still see the fabric for the shatter cones here. I want to show one other thing while I'm here. And that is these quartz, these quartz veins in here. Remember I saw those veins with the biotite earlier? So that gave me a hint that there's quartz veining coming through this granitic rock. And this would have happened after the granite was emplaced. The question is, was this in place before or after the shatter cones? And that I don't have an answer to, but maybe somebody's doing research on that today. So here's a vein running through the granite. So this would be much younger. And these are kind of things that early miners would have looked for, changing topics here a bit. And early miners would look for quartz veins like this coming through. And then they'd look for things like gold being speckled in here or silver coming through along with this, along with the quartz in here. It's also neat is check out these cute little baby cacti. Lots of cactus here in Santa Fe area. So continuing walking up the road, I can still see the remnants of a shatter cones in here. But what's also really neat is this surface here. So what is the surface we're looking at? This is actually a fault coming through here. And we can see that the fault has created a nice smooth surface here where, where one side of the rocks have slid past the other, basically creating a bit of a polish on the surface. And it looks like this fault is cutting where our shatter cones are. So that tells me that this fault came later than the shatter cones. And this may not have much movement on this fault, but there is a fault here and it runs Here's the one face of it, and it runs right through past where that tree is at. Here's another look at that fault zone. Here's a tree, and the tree is about three meters tall or about 10 feet tall or so. And you'll see there's one of these dikes coming down through here as well. And then there's a flat surface on that side. There's actually another surface coming in here. So this probably has been faulted in multiple directions or at least fractured in multiple directions. And as we look down, we can still see the shatter cones here, but we can see how the shatter cones are planed off by this feature, telling me that the shatter cones came before this faulting. So in geology, we can start looking at these, what we call cross-cutting relationships to figure out what came first and what came second and start building timelines. This is a nice look at one of these, what we call dikes going through the granite. So this is something that would have come in later on and coming through and you'll see the pink in here is mixed in with granite pieces. However, you can see this dike that has a different look to it and actually has, you'll see it has a layering associated with it as it came up through this granite. Whereas if you look up above, you'll see this pinkish color stuff, which is our, our host granite here. And you'll see it's more bulbous. It's not as well layered as you see here in this dike feature. So this is one of the things we can also look for to understand relative timing, right? So I have my granite over here that's kind of bulbous, doesn't have a lot of bedding, so what we call bedding associated with it, with it or layers. And then I come here and I can see this has layers and it's intruding through the granite and actually has pieces of the granite wrapped up into it. And so that tells me that this came later than the granite. And it appears this dike still sees evidence of the shatter cones, which tells me that these were intruded before the shatter cones came, uh, before the meteorite hit, and then the meteorite hit and created these shatter cone patterns, even within this dike feature that's cutting through our granite. And here's a really nice face of some of those.
Now I've come up the road a ways and I'm still looking for evidence of the shatter cones and sure enough, this granite doesn't look like it's very shattered. However, check out the debris that I see down here and especially check out this one piece is gorgeous. I mean, that's a beautiful conical pattern, right? You can see my hand for scale coming down and you can see how these are splaying out in a conical. So I may actually keep this piece, but it tells me that the conical patterns or the shatter cones still exist somewhere up this hill and I'm not gonna sc scramble up there today, but it tells me that yes, we're still indeed seeing evidence of this meteor impact, which, you know, if you think about how big a meteor impact would be, it could have been quite sizable. And so I would expect to see it over a long distance. However, because the mountains here, as I turn around, have been raised into the sky and eroded, there's probably a lot of portions that are gone now. So we're really lucky that this is captured at all, even in this one area. So now I've gone even farther up the road and we can see the granite up there. I imagine if I can get over on that side, I'd probably see some of the shatter cone material down on the slope over here, uh, which is about equivalent to where I started at if you go all the way down. But we're starting to see there's a change in the geology here. This looks very different than the other features I've seen. So I can come down here and look at the scree again and see what's coming down and see if I see more evidence of the conical or conical features or the shatter cone features. And right here, if we look up, I'm not seeing a lot of it like we were before where it's just a whole bunch of debris. But what I am seeing are things that are very different. Things like quartz with some mica or Maybe it's a uh, muscovite. It's pretty light, so maybe muscovite. Muscovite is the lighter of the two as far as flaky material goes. Oh, here's a little, oh, here's a little, here's a little piece of a, looks like a shatter cone, but I'm not sure where this came from. This is the only one I see here in this area. So I've hiked down the road a little farther, and what you'll notice is I have some rocks back over here. However, when I get over here, there's not nearly as many rocks or exposures that I can take a look at, and it's very covered in trees, which is quite beautiful. But what I want to do again is look down here at the scree and see if I recognize anything that could be up dip that would tell me I still have shatter cones above me, even though I don't see them down here. And indeed, it looks like there may be some small pieces, but they're pretty small, and they've tra probably traveled a little distance down the slope. And so these may be some of those shatter cones, but they're not quite as obvious. Here's one. Not quite as obvious down here. So I'm going to go ahead and head back towards the main shatter cone area and see if I can pick up a couple samples so I can show you guys once I get home what they look like up close and talk a little bit more about the concept of these shatter cones. Here are some of those shatter cone pieces that I ended up collecting. This is the one I showed showing the scale of my hand here. I really like this one. You can really see why they call them cones because you can really see that conical shape to it. You know, if I turn it around, it look more like a classic cone. Most people would know where it comes up this direction. But So this is the largest piece I collected, but then I got some other really interesting pieces and I thought this one's interesting. You can see the striae and the foliations on this. What's interesting is you can see it on multiple sides. And I thought that was pretty unique, especially I think it's uh, this one. You really see it. So you can see the shadow cone pattern on that side. You can see it on that side. You can see it on this side. The energy splayed in multiple directions to create shatter cones in every perceivable way in this granite. Pretty cool. And I did collect one piece from uh, that shows the shatter cone texture in the the mafic looking dike or the darker dike feature there and you see that still has a shatter cone texture but you'll notice it looks a little bit different than maybe I'll try to get this one that's a similar size here it's not quite as pronounced as it is in the granite and i think that's because this may be a harder rock and it had a harder time establishing that pattern in it but this is from from the dike and you can see actually some of the some of the uh, mica that's in here it's it's shiny as well thank you all for joining me today to check out the shatter cones in new mexico 
If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. And in doing so, also hit that bell for notifications so you can find out when my newest episodes come out. I really appreciate you all joining me today. I learned a lot. I hope you all learned a lot. Thanks again. Take care. Mm -hmm.